I guess uh, Mr. G here, just wanna look at inverse functions. Um, and of course, in this case, uh, we are having the parabola in the form y equals to x squared, just the standard form. And in this video, particularly this video, we are investigating the domain and the range. How, uh, how does this work? How do you restrict these things? Now, um, inverses guys come from really geometry. Um, and what do we do in geometry? In geometry, we do stuff like rotation, transformations, you know, um, you know and different types of, rota of transformations, rotation being one of them, reflection being another form of rotation. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna reflect this graph. I'm gonna reflect this graph here the parabola about this line. This is the line y equals to x. The line y equals to x has a positive gradient and it passes on the origin. And so the line y equals to minus x will also have a negative, uh, will also pass through the gradient, uh, excuse me, through the origin, but will have a negative gradient. Okay, so let's quickly do this reflection. I'm using GeoGebra here, a cool app that you can download on your PC or even mobile device. Otherwise, there's this Desmos uh, that you can try out as well. So I'm gonna reflect this about the line and you can see what I've got to do. I must first select the object to reflect and the line to ref of reflection. And there is my line of reflection. I'm gonna use a different color for the reflected um, a picture here for the reflected function. Uh, uh, yeah, whichever way you want it. I, I don't want to say function because we can see the inverse here is not a function anymore. Okay. Um, and um, how do we see that it's not a function anymore? We see that because of the vertical line test. Um, if you may, I will put up this um, thing here and um, I show you what I mean by the uh, uh, by the vertical line test. So if I, if I run a, a vertical line in red in this case, you can see that I've got, um, for the green, look at both the green and, and, the, and the gray, um, you can see that there is always a one-to-one -one relation. In other words, for one X value, there is exactly one a Y value. But when I come to this orange one here, which is the inverse, of the parabola at this point, you can see I'm starting to have one too many. For one X value, you are having two uh, uh, Y values. So that is the problem. Uh, in other words, this inverse fails the vertical line test, okay? That's, that's why we cannot <coughs> regard it as a function, okay? Now, the, the, the big question then that usually comes in the exams and, and, and stuff is that, what should you do to this graph um, to be a function? What should you do to the inverse <coughs> um, to be a function? And that's what we're going to investigate in this video. So to start with, let us see what happens. I've got Ge uh, GeoGebra here has the equations. I've, I put up this equation, but after reflecting, it has put up this equation. What is happening in this equation, it says what, minus y squared plus x equals to zero. That means basically y squared is equal to x, okay? Now, if you compare this equation with the original equation, the original equation you had y equals to x squared. You can see that what we have done actually, we have sort of swapped the variables. x has now, uh, 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 you know, been replaced by y. And the same thing there, y there is replaced by x. So in other words, where you see x, you put a y, where you see a y, you put an x, or whichever way you say it. But the principle in finding an inverse is that you've got to interchange, you've got to exchange the two variables, the position of the two variables. Now, this is the current sketch. So this sketch here is, we have sketched here y squared equals to x. That's what we have. In green here, we have y equals to x squared. And you can see the difference really. So the question is, that comes oftentimes is, what should we do for this thing to become a function? We have seen it fails the vertical line test. And so um, oftentimes when that comes, and uh, that's where students uh, start to panic and say, my word, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I'm, I'm just not sure what, how, where to start actually. So, and, and, and so we want to so help you 
uh, solve that crisis, right? We want to help you solve that crisis. So um, follow with me closely here as we get to that. Now, this is an issue of understanding the domain and the range, okay? Let's look at the graph y equals to x squared. The domain we can see for any real number, we will have the function defined. And the range, we can see that it starts from zero to infinity. And I just use that uh, simple form. Of course, if you say zero up to infinity, that's absolutely right. Or you gotta have a square bracket here. So that's fine. That's why I don't like using this notation. Um, so, but I'll just show you in, in case you wanna use that. So now, in this case, this is for the function. What about the inverse? So let me take a different pen here. Um, if, I, if I look at the inverse, y, which is y squared equals to x at the moment, I have the domain. <clears throat> now look, the domain is from here to there. So the domain you can see, x has to be greater or equals to zero. The range, now you can see, the range actually, y, is just any real number. And you can just see what is happening here, but this is not a function. So how can, how, what should we do for this to be a function? Well, we're gonna, rest, we're gonna have to restrict this thing. We're gonna have to restrict it. And for us to restrict it, it means we must do something. So if you think about this with me, we can either remove this part, then we have a function one-to-one, -one, or we can remove the upper part and we have the function one-to-one. -one. The question that you've got to ask yourself and probably answer at this point is, which part goes with which part? In other words, if you look at the parabola, the green graph, which, which part does this thing here go with? Which part is, is being reflected here? I hope you can see that it is this part. And if you look at this one here, you can see it is that one, it is this one here, okay? Now, we can do one of the two. We can either restrict the original function such that when we find the inverse, the inverse is also a function, or we can leave the original function as it is and just put a restriction around the inverse. So what will be the restriction? Let's suppose we want to do this away. And, and so, so what we will do then is we will have a, 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 a let me just write it. Then that means we, from y squared equals to x, we must have y is equal to square root of x. And we have started already by saying the domain should be that. Now, what should be the range? Check this now. This is where the difference comes in. The range is going to be that, but we're going to put a plus there because our y values are starting to be defined from this point going up. So we are saying the range should be positive real numbers. That's all we're saying there. That's how we restrict our range. Or another way to really say it is just to say, well, the range, you can still write that. Really, that's fine. You know, okay. That's, that's really fine, okay? So that is, that is the important thing that we've got to do here. Now, if they were to ask, how would you restrict the original function, the domain of the original function, such that the inverse will be a, a, a function also, you can see, you can either say, well, either x will be less than or equals to zero, or x will be greater or equals to zero. That's how you will restrict your original function. Okay, so that the inverse remains a function as well. Okay, so that's, that's really just about it, guys. That is the principle behind inverses. They really come from uh, transformations that we have learned about and have studied in geometry. I don't want to keep this video uh, long and uh, keep you any longer lest you lose your patience with me. So I'm really going to stop it here. And um, you can follow up in the next videos as we sail through uh, uh, this talk of inverse functions. In the next video, I'm discussing the hyperbola. Cheers.